Hey guys, JV here sharing my moveset guide for the Conqueror class in For Honor. In this video, I'll show you exactly what each move looks like, how to execute them, and share little tips and tricks about the Conqueror that the game doesn't tell you. This should help if you're learning how to play this class, but also if you're having trouble against the Conqueror, which can be slow, awkward, and deceiving to fight against. Before we jump into the moveset, let's talk about how this class works generally. So this is a heavy class, one of three in the game. It's listed as medium difficulty, but I would call this more a medium hard class to learn because there are some surface level basics that make a lot of sense. It's defensive, whatever, but there's plenty of depth going on with the Conqueror that you don't truly learn until you get some more time with him or her. So this is a very slow moving class and it really extends the length of fights with its defensive abilities the ability to stop chain combos just with a single block is very useful so this is certainly a defensive character the game lists it also as a strong defense hard hitter there's a lot of reactionary abilities going on here with counters and whatnot so really what you're doing with the conqueror is focusing on blocking it's all about blocking it's about counter hitting making sure you're getting the right guard at the right time and shoving lots of shoving moves that we're going to get into the conqueror has some deceivingly quick light attacks that can be chained infinitely, but also some weirdly timed heavies that are awkward to prepare for. You just don't know when they're coming. When they do come, they're also pretty quick as well. So it's just awkward to fight against the Conqueror, and that is definitely an advantage if you are playing the Conqueror. Taking a look at hero-specific passives, the Conqueror gains renown by assisting or saving fellow heroes on his team and defending objectives. The Conqueror is fantastic in Dominion, so if you want a really good Dominion character, the Conqueror is really good. Revenge is standard across the board. We have Charged Attacks, which has attacks that you can charge having two charging levels, and each level deals more damage. This is a visual thing that we'll look at when we go through the actual moves, so keep that in mind. We also have Charge Attack Limits. You can't charge if you run out of stamina, so you have to worry about that when you're using a charge attack. You can also cancel a charge by pressing B, that's on Xbox One, but it's whatever the cancel heavy attack button is on your platform. That's how you cancel your charge attacks. Superior block has the Conqueror's blocks interrupting heavy and light attacks, and then the opponent cannot chain after being blocked. This is huge. I think this is one of the most understated things about the Conqueror. This is massive. Once you get one block off, you completely stop an opponent chain in their tracks. They can't combo. They can't go into whatever kind of move they're trying to take you down with. This is so useful. Remember that blocking is the Conqueror's best friend. Superior block heavy attacks means that heavy attacks against the Conqueror have superior block property during startup. So you're going to use this to counterattack and get off really quick heavy counters. This is kind of synergizes with one of the charging abilities. So we'll explain more of that when we look at the moves. Full block stance blocks all three guards without superior block property. It consumes stamina on activation and whenever you block an attack and then the conqueror is knocked off balance if a block empties his stamina this is a move shared with the warlord one of the other heavies in the game and it's purely defensive it's something that's very situational we'll talk more about it when we look at the move contrary to other heroes the conqueror cannot faint you cannot cancel your heavy attacks you can cancel your charging attack which is something we'll talk about but you can't cancel normal heavy attacks with the conqueror finally the conqueror's zone attack can be maintained indefinitely until you run out of stamina to keep opponents at a distance i think this is just telling you that you can use this infinitely it just keeps going he keeps swinging his flail over his head until he runs out of stamina really useful for soldiers on dominion now looking at the moveset list, we've got a charging attack, we've got a few combo chains to work with, the block stance, and then four different ways to shield bash or shield crush. So obviously you can tell a lot of the focus is going to be on that and using that to your advantage. So let's go ahead and look at each of these moves individually. First is charging heavy attack, which is simply to hold the heavy attack button. This is going to start up the flail. I'm sure you've seen this before on the receiving end or if you play the conqueror, this is just charging up your flail. This is where you get the charged attacks here hero specific passive ability it has two different levels so the first level you'll start at the first level you'll see your chain is kind of blinking a little bit of this pinkish red color and then after about a second or two it's going to turn into a much brighter pinker red color keep in mind though as you're using this you are actively draining your stamina so you can't hold the charging heavy attack forever in order to actually unleash the attack you have to let go of the heavy button i'm sure that's pretty obvious for some of you but this is a really good attack i like to use this against really aggressive enemies like assassins for example who want to rush up on me and when you unleash the heavy attack it's deceivingly quick it's faster than a normal heavy with the conqueror so keep that in mind you can really surprise your opponents with the charging heavy also remember you can totally cancel this thing if you've been holding it for too long and depleted too much stamina click the cancel heavy attack button remember that the conk can't faint but you can cancel this heavy by clicking the same button 
Next is Conscript's Attrition, which is just light attack, light attack, light attack until you basically run out of stamina or your opponent gets away from you. It's an infinite combo chain, which is just one button, light attack, over and over and over. This is a great combo chain to use against any opponent because it is very overwhelming very quickly. It doesn't matter if you're facing some big burly heavy on, you know, the opposing end or a small attacking assassin. It's quick. This is deceivingly quick and you need to use this as much as possible, especially if your opponent is not prepared for it. You can rack up a ton of damage very quickly, and then you can finish it off with a heavy with the other combo we're about to talk about. So Conscript's Attrition is very effective. Use it as much as possible. Next is Final Argument, which is Light, Light, Heavy. And again, I like working this into Conscript's Attrition because you can finish that off with a heavy, and that'll be your final argument. But you could also just do a Light, Light, Heavy for this combo. This is also really effective if you want a quick, you know, one, two, three punch. And again, these lights in the beginning of this combo are really quick, so you can use that to your advantage get two quick ones in and then a heavy in another direction again remember to switch up your directions to make this the most effective for you reaper's crush is heavy heavy and this is obviously a slower move because we got two heavies back to back and this is something that i would really only use if your opponent is out of stamina otherwise unless they're a beginner and you can get these heavies off you know without getting blocked or parried or dodged or anything like that but i would use this if your opponent is out of stamina and they can't really prepare for you or if you've guard broken you can go ahead and go into this heavy and then follow up with another heavy in another direction. Again, I don't use this in straight up 1v1s a lot of the time unless my opponent is caught off guard for some reason. So Reaper's Crush is going to deal a lot of damage, but it has quite a startup time and people are usually prepared for those heavies. Next is Full Block Stance, which is just down on the guard and then you go into that stance, you hear the little voice cue, and you're going to be blocking from all directions. This is such a useful ability to have, but people use it incorrectly. If you're a beginner with the Conqueror, you tend to just go into Full Block Stance and hold it down. That's not what you want to do. It's going to drain your stamina. Each time you get hit, you're going to drain more stamina. So if you keep holding the full block stance, very quickly you're going to be out of stamina. And once you are, if you get hit, as the hero-specific ability explains, you're going to get knocked over, which is the worst thing possible. So use full block stance you know, sparingly in very specific situations where you feel you can't get to a certain guard in time. You feel more comfortable throwing down the full block stance and then dodging out of whatever situation you're in. Don't use this as a permanent hunker down kind of ability unless you're completely surrounded and you want to just get revenge just remember you don't want to run out of stamina while using this you'll get knocked over Next is Charging Shield Crush, which is out of guard mode. You're not going to be guard moding here. You're going to be sprinting, then hitting the guard break button. This is an unblockable move, and it also knocks your opponent to the ground. So you can't do anything about this on the receiving end. The only way for someone to get out of the Charging Shield Crush is to dodge out of the way. And something I want to urge you, don't start every single fight with a Charging Shield Crush. It's not a good idea, especially if you're in duels or brawl or elimination where it's just a 1v1 scenario at first. Don't rush in and do this every single time. People will Will just dodge out of the way they know what's coming however as i'm showing you in the gameplay it has a real quick startup time as in you can run away from a battle really quickly holding down the sprint button then turn right around and hit guard break and knock people over really quickly get a quick you know very easy side heavy in there that they can't even block I also like to knock people on the ground and then queue up a charging heavy attack and unleash it right when they get up. Usually people are not prepared for that. Again, I think this is best used mid-battle when they're not even expecting it, and also when you're on Dominion or somewhere like that where you're going in to help your teammate fight against another hero. You know, charging in and knocking them on the ground is very useful. Next we have Shield Bash, which is what you're going to be using the most, I believe. It's unblockable and it'll push your opponent back, kind of stun them a little bit. It's side or forwards dodge, so that's left, forward, or right right with dodge and then a guard break that'll initiate the unblockable shove shield bash. I think it's pretty obvious how useful this thing is. If you knock your enemies into any kind of object, they'll be stunned. That'll open up a free side heavy, so remember that. But I think the big thing to hammer home here is don't always use forward dodge and guard break for this shield bash. You can use side dodge. So you can dodge an opponent's move and immediately go into a shield bash to open up a free attack. Remember that. If you're fighting some big burly opponent like a raider who's just swinging really heavily, especially from above, you need to be able to side dodge and then guard break into the shield bash very effective thing to learn 
Another version of Shield Bash is Shield Bash Mix-Up, which is heavy and then guard break. This is also so important to learn, and this is how you can get into the Conqueror's Vortex, which is something we're going to talk about. But essentially, you can repeat this attack over and over. It also has a nice kind of lunge property to it. So if you miss with your heavy attack with the mix-up, so you miss the heavy off the bat, you can click Guard Break, and the Conqueror will teleport forward, lunge forward, and get off the Shield Bash and still stun your opponent, even if you missed it. You can also keep repeating this until you run out of stamina, and that is essentially the Vortex for the Conqueror. So I'll show more about the Vortex, talk about how you can use that to your advantage once we finish the move list. The final move in this set is Shield Bash Repost, which is down on guard and guard break. So I don't know what platform you guys play on, if you play with a controller or mouse and keyboard, but this is very awkward to pull off with a controller, no matter what platform you're on. It's down on guard and then guard break. So you have to almost play claw or do some weird kind of variation in order to press these buttons at the same time. Because of that, I find this really awkward and I really don't use it because I think you have plenty of other opportunities to get an unblockable shield bash type move. I mean, we have three other ways to do that that we just talked about. So I wouldn't worry too much about the repost if you want to incorporate this into it. It's a little awkward to you know come across because not a lot of people use it because it's a little difficult to do. So if you want to put this into your repertoire, fine. It does require a little bit of practice in order to actually pull off in real combat scenarios. Those were all of the explicit moves for the Conqueror, but now let's talk about the things that the game doesn't tell you that you only gain from experience with playing with the Conqueror. So first off, if I didn't already hammer this home, Conscript's attrition can overwhelm beginners. I think that people that have played the game that have faced a Conqueror know to just back away when a Conqueror is spamming that light attack, but use this to your advantage. See if your opponent is able to, you know, be overwhelmed by this ability, and then if they are, just keep spamming the light button and you'll be able to overwhelm your opponents. Let's talk about that vortex that I mentioned. So this is by using the shield bash mix up and you can kind of combo this into any other thing. But really what I find useful is to start out with the shield bash mix up, which is heavy and then guard break. So that's going to activate the shield bash mix up. You're essentially going to see a heavy and then a shield bash and then you can pull off another heavy. It's essentially another free heavy and you can keep repeating that over and over. It does sap your stamina pretty quickly. So I definitely recommend trying to heavy and then shield bash to do the mix up and then try incorporating a light in there, maybe a normal guard break because you get a free side heavy out of that. You can really mix up a lot of things to get into a vortex that your opponent can't get out of unless they learn how to dodge. And again, beginners don't tend to dodge. So if you can try this with any 1v1 or brawl or elimination scenario, it's very effective against people that don't know how to counter it. Another effective move to learn is the counter to heavy when you're using the charging attack. So we looked at this at the very beginning of the video when you charge up the flail and it it turns a different color. Well, if you match the guard that your opponent is attacking from, so you have to wait for your opponent to attack, and then you unleash that heavy, you're going to hit them with a very quick heavy attack. So once again, what you're doing is holding down the heavy, but you're also you know using your shield to match whatever guard that the opponent is attacking from. If you match that and then let go of your heavy, you will unleash a very quick, heavy, hard hitting counter attack. Use that to your advantage against people that are super aggressive. Always remember that you have the full block stance and your shield to just do a normal block when you're overwhelmed. If you're getting comboed to Kingdom Come by a Peacekeeper, remember, just throw up your shield. And if you can't get the right direction, use full block stance, and that'll give you a free opportunity to stop whatever combo is really messing with you and start with whatever combo you're trying to do to deal damage. Also, remember, you have a lot of different ways to push people back with your shield bash. So many different ways. Use those to your advantage. Something that I found really frustrating when I first started playing the Conqueror is I would run out of stamina very quickly. Be careful when you throw out moves. Always watch your stamina meter. Make sure it's not going to throw you into no stamina because as a heavy character, the Conqueror feels very extremely slow when you're out of stamina. Don't get in a bad situation like that. Always watch your stamina. As we know, the Conqueror is a defensive hero, and because of that, you're going to be using your guard a lot to just, you know, guard, stop combos, all that like we've talked about. So as a result, a great way to counter you is, is to guard break you. So watch out for your opponent trying to guard, get in close and guard break you. Watch out for opponents that can dodge in and guard break like a Kensei or a Warden, I think. They can do that as well. Watch out for guard breaks and learn how to counter guard break. I know the weakest part of my game is counter guard breaking because the timing was different from the beta. I learned it in that. And then when it carried over the full game, I just never relearned it. And they're going to change it again. So that's crazy. But try to learn how to counter guard break. That'll be so effective for you and people won't be able to 
counter you if you could just counter their guard break. Finally, I know people will get a little salty for me recommending this, but push people off the map. It's what you're good at with the Conqueror. You have four different abilities that push, shove, and knock people down. Use that to your advantage. Push people off the map and watch out for people trying to push you off the map because they know you're going to be trying to push them off the map. So again, a very good, you know, reason to learn how to counter guard break because you're going to be trying to throw people off the map. That's what you're good at. Focus on that. That is all I have to share for the Conqueror. Again, I think this is a little bit of a tricky hero to learn, but once you get some more experience, you'll learn what works, what doesn't work, and what not to do with the Conqueror. So I hope this moveset guide kind of gave you an introduction to the hero and gave you some insight on how it works. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, click that like button, let me know, and also be sure to subscribe for more For Honor. I've got a lot more guides coming soon. It's going to be a little while till we stream this game again, but again, I have a lot more tips and tricks guides coming soon. You're not going to want to miss though. So thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.